Do you want to learn how to create a course marketplace website like Udemy or Skillshare? Well, if that's the case, you found the right video because in this tutorial, I will show you step by step how you can create a marketplace website where other people can sell courses on your website. You split the revenue. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how to get your own domain name and web hosting. Then we will install WordPress, the best free software to create websites. And after that, we will download a free theme and plugin in order to create a marketplace website. I will walk you through all the steps in order to upload a course to your own website. And we will configure a payment method so that visitors can buy courses and get access to them at once. All on autopilot. And now comes the great part. When visitors buy courses from instructors on your website, you share the revenue with the instructors. So the higher the revenue for the instructors, the more instructors you can attract to your website. So let's do some math. If your instructor gets 60% of every sale and you get 40% and visitors spend $10,000 in a month on courses on your website, that means that your instructors make a total of $6,000 and you will make $4,000 in that month. But in this tutorial, I will show you a way how to attract tons of instructors and generate monthly growing revenue with your website. So I will show you how to set up the commission structure and we'll set our website up in a way that a new visitor can become an instructor on your website. When we approve them, they can upload their own courses, set a price and make it look like this. When I approve their course, it will be published on their website and then any visitor can buy the course, pay money and get access to that course at once. The money for the course that's paid will go to my account and in my case 85% of that money goes to the balance of the instructor of that course. After 15 days the money goes from the balance of the instructor to the money that can be withdrawn. Why? Because maybe in the first 15 days people that enrolled in a course ask for a refund. So after 15 days the money is ready to be withdrawn by the instructor and we can set a threshold for the minimum amount that can be withdrawn. And the more instructors and courses you have, the more you have to offer to your visitors, the more money can be made. And the great thing is that a lot of people are not happy with the big course platforms that take a lot of commissions away from the instructors. So there's a big opportunity for new websites like these that can give the instructors what they deserve. And at the same time, you can make a lot of money. And that's all possible thanks to Tutor LMS. What else we will cover? How to create quizzes, work with coupon codes, how to give refunds, adjust the header of our website, create an amazing homepage, work with questions and answers on the course pages, Send automated emails and push notifications to visitors, instructors and administrators. Review in-depth reports. Create custom and personal certificates for people that completed a course. Use content drip so people that enrolled in a course cannot see all the content at once. How to find instructors to teach on your website and so much more. And what I really like about Tutor LMS is that your complete website is optimized for all devices. So this is how the complete process goes. People go to my website, they can learn something, they can buy a course or they can become an instructor. So when they click here, they see they can start teaching on Studio.me. They can earn 85% of every sale they make until the 31st of December, 2023. So I fill in my details over here and I register as an instructor. Your application will be reviewed and I got a message. There's a new instructor. Now I can review the instructor's request. So I approve it. And since I proved it, they can upload their first course. So Jason can go to his dashboard. Look how beautiful this looks. So Jason can now complete his profile by sending his profile photo. And a cover photo. And fill in their details over here. Update my profile. I go to my dashboard. I see that I need to set my withdrawal method. PayPal, Jason's PayPal account, save. Great. So now I can create a new course by clicking here. I create a title. I can say something about my course. More settings. It's for all levels. I want to enable questions and answers. And the category is development. It's a paid course, no discount. So it's, um, $27. I want to upload a course thumbnail. So of course, Jason uploads an image, which is this one. And then there's the course introduction and we can upload a video or use YouTube or Vimeo. Let's choose YouTube. I paste the trailer and then we can build our course. We can have topics also known as modules or chapters introduction. I can have a topic summary and I click on add topic. Now in that introduction, we can have lessons. And I can have content over here. I can have a featured image and I can have videos, upload them 
or use Vimeo or YouTube or any other platform. I can have attachments. I can make this a free course preview so people don't have to pay, but they can see if they like the information in the course. Then I can create a second lesson. Why Aquaman? I can create new topics. I can add quizzes or import quizzes. Then I can add multiple instructors. And then here I can say what people will learn. The course duration, three hours and 12 minutes. Materials included, nothing. Requirements, and I can select course tags. And I can add a certificate when people complete the course. I like this one, so I use this one. And then it will be personalized for the person that completes the course. I submit the course, I get an email. Jason submitted for a course. I can publish the course from here. Or I can see the course and this is how it looks. Course information, course content. This one is visible because I made it free. People can leave a review when they follow the course. People can ask questions. And Jason can create announcements for everybody that's enrolling in this course. And all those people will get an email and a push notification. Here's more information about the course. And if I approve this course, I can go to the back end to Tutor LMS courses and I can publish it. And now when I open this website in an incognito window, I scroll down and I see the course learn how to become Aquaman. I can add it to the cart and then I need to register. If I'm already a member, I can log in or I can register now. I fill in my details. My name is Orm Arias and I click on register. Great. I scroll down again, add it to the cart, view the cart, and I proceed to the checkout. I fill in the other details. I'm from the Netherlands. I scroll down and I want to pay with PayPal or with this one. So I click on pay now. Look at this. I'm redirected to the course area at once and I can start learning. And if I want to, I can, of course, upload all the videos in my course or show lessons, add exercise files. I can add comments. So if I have a question, I don't see the video. This question will be sent to Jason Momoa and then he can fix it. I can go to the next video if there were videos. If I've completed this video, I click on mark as complete and there's a check mark over there and then I can see my progress. Close this. And if I have a question, I go to q and I can ask my question. Now let's log in as Jason Momoa. And look at this. If I scroll down, I made $22.95. That is 85% of $27. So if I go to withdrawals, my current balance is $22.95. And if or Marius does not ask for a refund within 15 days, which I highly doubt since he's the brother of Aquaman, this money will go to this amount. And when this amount is at least, in my case, $500, but you can decide for yourself what amount it should be. And they can ask for a withdrawal and you can send the money to their account and you keep 15% of all the sales that are made. Unless you decide to go with 60, 40 or 50, 50. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. And I have to say, I really like how everything looks. The design is really clean. So when you follow and act upon all the steps in this tutorial, you are ready to start your own online business adventure, start to make a lot of money. And at the same time, everything will be on autopilot. I'm really excited for you. And before we start, two more practical things. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings of the YouTube video and change the playback speed to a slower one, or you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and go back five seconds in the video. In the description of the video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, you can click on one of the timestamps and you go directly to that part of the video. Do you like what you've seen so far? Then please take a short moment to like this video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming tutorials about WordPress related tutorials. And now let me show you the four steps we will take in order to create an amazing marketplace website where other people can sell courses on your website and you make money with that. So there are four things we need to do. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how you can get your own domain name and web hosting and I can give you 70% discount. After that, we will install WordPress. Then we will get the free version of Tutor LMS and then we will create our amazing course platform. If you already have a domain name and web hosting and you have already installed WordPress, I will show you on the screen right now where you need to go in order to continue with this tutorial. Now it's really time to get started. 
The first things we need are a domain name and web hosting. Let me tell you what a domain name is and what web hosting is. A domain name is the address of your website. So if I would go to facebook.com, facebook.com is the domain and everything you see on this website is the web hosting. Web hosting is a really fast computer that is turned on 24 seven with all the information on your website. And you can rent it for a few dollars per month. It's like having a house. If you want people to visit you, you need to give them your address and your domain name is the address of your website. So your domain name is the address of your website and everything you see over here is the web hosting. If Facebook would have no domain name, it would look something like this. And that can be quite a challenge to remember by heart. And that's why we need a domain name. And when we have a domain name, we want to display things on our website. And that's why we need web hosting. If you have that already, that's great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, go to webhosting1616.com, hit enter. And then you can click on the link, go to SiteGround. I love SiteGround. SiteGround is in my opinion, the best web hosting provider there is. And I'm not the only one with that opinion. In a Facebook web hosting group with more than 5,000 members, SiteGround is mentioned most when it comes to the best web hosting provider. And I agree with them. I scroll down a bit and there are three plans you can choose. And the best value for your money is the Grow Big plan. And what is the difference between the Grow Big plan and the Startup plan? Here with the Grow Big plan, you can have unlimited websites. Look at this, unlimited websites. And with the Startup plan, you only have one website. And all the time people are upgrading from Startup to Grow Big because they want to create more websites. So I suggest Grow Big and you can always upgrade later if you want to. Over here, you can have unlimited websites, 20 gigabyte of web space. Well, most websites are 200 megabytes. So you can have up to 100 websites with this plan. You can have up to 100,000 visits per month. And I hope you will get that because that will mean a lot of business for you. And then if you have that, you can always upgrade to the Go Geek plan. And then you will have 40 gigabyte of web space. And you can have up to 400,000 visits per month. This is the plan I have right now because I have a lot of websites and a lot of visitors. But keep in mind, you can always upgrade later. So I will start with the Grow Big plan. And more great things about it is you can have free SSL. So your website will be secured with some web hosting providers that cost money. Here it is free. You have daily backups. That's amazing. If you somehow mess things up, SiteGround got you covered. You will have a backup of the day before and of the day before that. Free CDN. That means that your website will be fast throughout the whole world. No matter where the visitors come from, your website will be blazing fast. You can have unlimited free email accounts. And really important, this is great for e-commerce. And if you somehow really don't like it, you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk for you. So I will choose to grow big plan by clicking here. Now we need to choose a domain name. If I would say facebook.com, I want to buy facebook.com. I click on proceed. Of course, it will say You've chosen an invalid domain name because it's already taken. So you need to choose a domain name that is still available. What I would advise everybody in the world to do is get your own domain name with your first name and your last name. I hope it's still available for you. And otherwise you can use a company name or a custom name. And if you offer local services, you can place your hometown in the domain. For instance, web design Maslaus. The great thing is that you can choose a lot of different extensions, .com, .net, .org. I always suggest use .com or the local one from your country. I go for student me. So let's see if it's still available. I click on proceed. Yes, it says congratulations. Your domain is available for registration with your hosting account. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Now I can leave some details over here. First, my email address jk24co at gmail.com. I need to create a password and I need to confirm my password. And then over here, I need to say from which country I am. I'm from the Netherlands. And I will fill in my details. Ferdy, Corpusuk, Ferdy, and Anna. Media, if you have a company, fill in your name over here in your vet slash tax ID. If you fill in your tax ID, you don't have to pay taxes for this order. It's okay. Great. Uh, SiteGround gives feedback at once, which is nice. I'm from this city, this street. And my zip code, if I would say it wrong, it will correct me. It will say, hey, you need to remove the space. And then over here, I need to fill in my phone number. And it's really important that it's the correct number. So say plus three, one, six, and then your phone number. Really important to have this over here, the, the country code. 
I scroll down and depending on where you come from, there can be local payment providers. So if I would enter this website from the Netherlands, I would see IDO over here. You will maybe see PayPal. I will use credit card. So I will fill in my details and then we go to the purchase information. We go for the grow big plan and the data center. We can choose a few depending on where you want to focus on. If you want to focus on people from the United States, keep it in the United States. If you want to focus on people from the Netherlands or somewhere near the Netherlands, choose Germany or the Netherlands. I want to go for, for people worldwide. So I choose the USA and the period is 12 months. We pay $6.69 per month and then we can have unlimited websites on our grow big account, which is amazing. And then if we scroll down, I highly urge you to get domain privacy. It will cost you $12 per year, but it will save you so much spam because if you don't turn this on, a lot of companies can see that there's a new domain name with your personal information, with your phone number, your address, your email account, your email address, and then they can send you spam emails like, hey, I can make a logo for you. I can do SEO for you. You don't want that. So for $12, you don't have that. Then I scroll down and I will pay a total amount of $110.27. It can be a little bit more or less with you, depending on where you come from. And with this amount, you have a domain name or web hosting for a complete year. And you can add more domains to your account and create multiple websites. And they're all blazing fast. And there's a great support if you get stuck somewhere. I confirm that I've read the terms and service and I agree with them. And I would like to receive news updates from SiteGround. If you got it through webhosting15.com, you don't pay more, but you get an amazing discount and I do get credit for it. So it's a win-win situation. And then I click on pay now. And then the great thing is that our website will be live immediately. We don't have to wait for 24 hours. It will be live at once. If everything goes right, you should see this right now. And that's amazing. And then I want to congratulate you with your domain name and web hosting. If you don't see that, it can be that you see something like this. If that's the case, fill in the confirmation number you get in the text message, and then you should be able to proceed. And in some cases, uh, SiteGround will put an amount on your uh, credit card account and you need to fill in that number so they know for sure it is your credit card account. And you can do that by going to your account or your credit card account or by calling your credit card company. I had to call them. I want to check everything so you know exactly what to do in every situation. I hope both of those confirmations do not appear for you, but now you know what to do when you see those two screens. So let's continue. And my account was successfully created. How great is that? I can proceed to the customer area. Then I need to log in with the details I use to sign up for SiteGrounds. Now it says welcome 30 and here we can set up our website. But what I rather do, I rather go to websites. Then it says over here, uh, set up incomplete. So I click on finish site setup. Then I choose my domain name, which I have over here. I click on continue and I want to skip and create an empty site. I don't need those two tools. I scroll down and I click on finish. And now it says it will take less than two minutes before your website is created. And now it says your website with your domain is created. And I want to go to the site tools by clicking here. The first thing I want to do, I want to make my website secure. So I go to security. SSL manager. Then I select my domain name and then I select let's encrypt. I click on get. This can take a minute. So we have to wait. There it is. Now I can configure the HTTPS, but what I rather do here below, I go to actions and force HTTPS and then I turn this on and that's it. Now I go to WordPress, install a manage. Then I want to install WordPress. Even if I'm going to install WooCommerce, I rather start with WordPress. So I click on select. Then I choose my domain name. I can choose the language for my website, the installation path. That means that I can install the website on my domain name.com forward slash new or test, but I rather install this on my main folder. And then I need to create a login name for WordPress and a password and an email address. And I scroll down. I don't need to have uh, the WordPress starter. I click on install and WordPress will be installed on our brand new domain name. And there it is. Now WordPress is installed on our brand new website. So what we have, we have an admin panel. I open it in a new tab and we have the website. I open it also in a new tab. Then I close this window 
What we see over here is the back end of our website. Here we're going to configure our website, create pages, create blog posts, upload images. And then over here, we can see the front end. This is what people will see. When people enter your domain name right now, they will go right to this page. We are live. And the great thing is that our website is also secure. So this is what people will see when they enter your website. And this is where we can configure our website. Well, the first thing I want to do, I want to clean up my website. So what I will do over here at the back end, I will dismiss this message. Then I want to collapse all this stuff over here, or even better, go to the screen options, uncheck everything. So it will not be shown. So our dashboard is clean. Then I want to go to the plugins. And for now, I want to remove all the plugins by selecting this checkbox, bulk actions, deactivate. We first need to deactivate plugins before we can remove them, apply. And since I've deactivated them, I see that my menu is a little bit cleaner. Those two things are not active anymore. Bulk actions again, delete, apply. I'm okay. Great. Then I go to the posts. There's one example post. I want to bring it to the trash. Go to the trash and empty the trash. The same with pages. I go to the pages, select both pages, move to the trash, apply. Then I go to the trash and I empty the trash. I go to appearance themes and the themes I do not use right now. This one 2020, I don't use that. I delete it. Okay. And this one, I will leave it for later because I want to show you an example of what you can do with themes. Then over here at the right top corner, I can edit my profile. I can change the look and feel of the back end. So you can choose something you prefer. I prefer the default one. Right now it says Howdy Ferdy Corp. So when I write a blog post, it will say written by Ferdy Corp. I rather use my full name. So over here, my first name is Ferdy. My last name is Corpus Hook. And then I can change my display name publicity as 30 Corpus Hook. And that's what you now see over here. Then over here, I can have an email address. And this email address is linked with a Gravatar account. I'll talk about it in a minute. And because it is, it has a special profile picture. I can change it by clicking here and then I go to Gravatar. I can sign up. And if I sign up with the same email address I use over here, then the image I upload at Gravatar will be displayed over here and also in your website where you want to display this. So if I've written a blog post and I want to show my face, it will show this image. I can say something about myself. So if I created a blog post and it says something about the author, this text will appear and I can create a new password and I can update my profile. If I want to go to the front end, I click over here. If I want to go to the back end, I click over here. So I actually don't need this. So this looks better in my opinion. This is how it looked. This is how it looks right now. It's cleaner and it helps me to be productive in creating a beautiful website. I want to go through a few more settings over here at settings general. I want to make my website secure over here. So I will add an S over here and over here. I probably need to log in again. So if I click on save changes, oh, it's all fine. But sometimes you need to log in again. And then uh, we're going to talk about the site title on the tagline later in a few minutes. And then over here, I don't want people to register. The site language, I can change it over here. The time zone, well, I live in the Netherlands, so I search for Amsterdam. There it is. And then automatically in the winter and in the summer, the right time zone is selected. And how do I want to show the date? July 25, 2022 or different. I like this one. You can also create a custom one with those codes, but I prefer this one. And then the time format, I like to work with PM and AM with capitals. My week starts on Monday, so I save the changes. What you see over here, membership, anyone can register. We're going to take a look at this later. We're also going to take a look later to the site title and the tagline. Right now, I want to take a look at the plugin we're going to use. And in order to see that, we go to 30 corpcom forward slash. Tutor LMS. Hit enter and you'll be redirected to the Tutor LMS website. And you can watch this video, but what you will see is how you can create a course website where you sell one course or multiple courses, or even create a marketplace where other people can sell courses and you share the revenue. I'll show you in the store how you can create something like that. We're going to create quizzes, give assignments, 
people can watch it on a mobile as an event calendar, advanced analytics. It's amazing what you can do with this plugin. And I will show you how you can implement everything. Well, right now I want to close this and take a look at a different tool we will use. That is ferdicorp.com forward slash Elementor. Hit enter. That's the page builder we're going to use to create our landing page and other pages. But they are changing the website all the time. So instead of downloading the tool over here, I will close this and show you how you can make use of Tutor LMS and Elementor from within WordPress. In order to do that, we go to Appearance Themes. I click on Add New and I search for Tutor Starter. I don't have to hit Enter. Automatically, this will be refreshed and you see Tutor Starter. I click on Install. So we're going to use this theme with all their special functionalities. And then I click on Activate. Great. Now when I open this in a new tab, holding command or control, it looks like this. Well, it doesn't look that appealing, but this theme looks amazing when you use it. Okay. The next thing we will do, it says this theme recommends the following plugin, Tutor Mate. So I click on begin installing this plugin. I click over here, install. Then I go back to the plugin manager and then I want to activate it. So I click on activate. Great. Now I go to the tutor starter over here and then over here I see starter sites. I click on it. Now we can install at this moment four different kinds of pre-made websites. Maybe you want to create a single course, then you can use this pre-made website. Maybe you have multiple courses, but there's only one instructor, then you can use this website. Maybe you want to have a marketplace where other people also can upload and sell their courses. Or you want to have a university. Well, it's this, these two are actually the same uh, based on my preference. I choose this one, the marketplace, because I like the layout more. And I can preview it by clicking here. And I think they can use a better image. And I will show you how you can use a better image. And then the whole quality of the website looks better. No offense, of course. It's, it's just uh, the, the quality of the picture. And then it looks like this. We can have different categories. We can have courses and they look like this and people pay money. They can add it to the cart. They can pay it. And when they pay it, they get access at once. And you can share the revenue with the person that is selling this course on your website. So let's install this one by clicking on import. I want to make use of Elementor. So what we will install Elementor Tutor LMS, which is the free version of the plugin we will use in order to create this marketplace website. It works in combination with WooCommerce because WooCommerce has everything to do with the whole selling process, creating an invoice, and we'll make use of field tutor LMS, Elementor add-ons. So we can use Elementor in order to create landing pages, show the latest courses and all that stuff. So I click on import now. This can take a while. So I will fast forward. Great, now our pre-made template or website is installed. And if I click over here, I can see the result. So on your own domain name with your web hosting, you have this at this moment. So there are courses. In this case from the admin for the Corpsuk. and new visitors can buy those courses and other people can sign up to become a course seller. And when their courses are sold on your website, you can split the revenue and you can decide how much everybody is earning. And then if I click over here, this is how it looks. And it looks a lot like Udemy. So if I go to udemy.com, you have the logo, here are the categories, the search bar, two pages and then the account details. So it looks a little bit the same. I see a course I like, I click on it. There, I, I see a video, I see the price, I see information about this course over here also, and it looks a little bit similar. So that's a great thing. What I want to do now before we are going to create our first course, I want to go to the back end. I want to uh, get rid of this, this, and this, but not this, because here we're going to see how much money we are making. That's what we want. I see a comment that comes with the pre-made website and I click on approve and dismiss this message. And now I want to take a look at the settings in general, the site title. Well, if I go to Udemy, it says online courses, learn anything. 
So I can also say something similar because it will be a similar website. I don't have to, I should not copy everything, but I can get inspiration. So I can also go to skillshare.com. Online learning. Coursepoint.com. I can buy that one. I have no idea why, uh, how I <laughs> ended up thinking about Coursepoint. I thought some email I got. I thought I got an email from Forcepoint if I wanted to host my classes over there. But also, also over here, online learning, online learning platform. Learn and earn. I hope that will create some excitement or interest for the people that are seeing that site title. Learn anything online at once and start selling your own course courses. Okay. Save the changes. Okay. Then over here, I see membership and I want anyone to register. And when they register, I want them to become a tutor instructor. Save the changes. I'm so excited to place my first course on my website, but let me talk you through the settings first. And now I want to take a look at the tutor LMS settings. So over here at tutor, uh, tutor LMS, I go to settings. Then there's the general area. The dashboard page. Uh, every visitor has their own dashboard. So I can go to my dashboard because I'm logged in already. And it looks like this. Look how amazing this looks. I I'm excited about this. And we're still using the free version. We can create a new course over here. How many courses we are enrolled in, how many active courses we have, how many courses we have completed, how much money we have made, the total amount of courses I have. Well, all the courses on the website right now are mine because I'm the only user and there are two students. So there is another student. So I want this to be the dashboard page, the terms and conditions page. Well, it's been taken care of the, the, the title, but take a look at this and you can get inspiration from you to me. Page down. We can go to the terms. Please do not copy and paste it. Uh, you can Google how this works. I cannot give you any legal advice, but what I can say is uh, go to an advisor, someone who can help you with this. Okay. Enable the marketplace, allow multiple instructors to upload their own courses. Of course, that's what we want. Pagination set the numbers of rows uh, will, that will be displayed. It's totally fine. And then allow instructors to publish their course. Well, if you turn this on, that means that when a new visitor or a new course creator publishes their course, it will be online immediately without you reviewing the course. So in order to make sure that nobody does anything weird in a course, I would turn this off. So when people publish a course, you need to check it before it will be published. And do you want to have an, become an instructor button? So everybody that goes to your website can become an instructor. Well, that's the goal. Save the changes. Then I go to the course area, the course visibility, students must be logged in to view the course. No, everybody over here is able to watch the courses in my website. So I will not turn that off. Course content access. Well, if you're an administrator or you are the instructor of that course, you'll be enrolled automatically. Do we want to show a summary? Enable this feature will show a content course summary on the course details page. So I go to a course and over here, there's information about the course. If I turn it off, it's not there. Auto redirect users to courses. So when people buy a course, they should automatically go to the content of the course so they can start to learn new things immediately. I like that. So I turn it on the spotlight mode. It is in spotlight mode. What does it mean? There's no header. There's no footer. People can focus on the content and there are no distractions which are unnecessary. Auto course complete on all lessons. So when people completed all the lessons, they have completed the course automatically. It will say, Hey, you've completed the course or should they manually click on a button? If they do, you can choose two things. Students can complete course anytime in the flexible mode or students have to complete pass all the lessons and quizzes to mark a course as complete. So you can say, no, that doesn't have to happen. Just click on complete when you have watched all the videos or 
when they followed all the courses, got great grades. Well, I prefer this one, a flexible. Can people reset their course progress and start over? Well, I've never seen it, so I leave this off. But hey, if you want that, you can turn it on. Maybe after a year, somebody comes back and then they want to start over again. Or maybe the course maker, the, the instructor, updated the course. They recreated it. So in that case, it can be handy. Publish the course review on admin's approval. That means that when somebody leaves a review, which is bad or good, after it's approved, can they still adjust it? Well, maybe people give a bad review and then the feedback they give, you use it to make your course better. And then when you've done it, you can ask them, hey, can you republish your review and make it better? Well, in that case, turn it on. Do we want to create a lessons with the WP WordPress editor? No, not with the classic editor. I, I prefer to use the block builder for that. Automatically load the next course content. So if your video or your course content is finished, load the next area. No, enable lesson comment. I like that because then you can create some interaction like, hey, what's your biggest problem when it comes to affiliate marketing? Let me know in the comments below this video and then you can see what other people are saying and it gives a feeling of, hey, I'm not here alone. I'm, I'm following this course with a lot of other people. So I urge you to turn that on. About quizzes, we're going to take a look at quizzes later. Really important, preferred a video source. Well, I don't want to uh, load my service with a lot of videos. So I will make use of external services like YouTube, which is free, and Vimeo, which can be free. And you have also a pro version. So when people uh, place a course on my website, they can use YouTube with uh, listed videos that are not visible in, in the search results. But you can embed them over here or with Vimeo, the free version or the pro version. So those two options are the options I prefer. And in that way, my website stays fast and does not get stacked with a lot of videos. Really interesting monetization. The e-commerce engine, we are going to use WooCommerce. So WooCommerce takes care of all the hard stuff. And then Tudor also takes care of all the other hard stuff. So we can just enjoy the ride and do all the fun stuff. So normally when you buy something through WooCommerce, it goes to process or a pending. But when it's pending, you, you don't get access to the course. So when we say automatically complete WooCommerce orders, that means that at once they get access to the course. If you turn this off, they will not get access. So I would definitely turn this on. Enable revenue sharing. No, of course, this is, this is amazing. If I go to Udemy and I go to my progress, let me see. It's been a while since I've been here, which is not a good thing because I should answer questions. Instruct the dashboard. And then I can go to performance. Okay, I made a total of $40,000, but if I divide it by all the amount of students, it's like 30 cents per enrollment. That's not much because what I want to do, I want to create courses and sell maybe for $100 or $20. If I say on Udemy that I sell my course for $199, Udemy will make it a $20 course with a super, super, super discount. But then they say, I want to have 75% of the revenue because we're also uh, placing advertisements on the internet. So I get 25% of $19.99 or $9.99. So I get $2.50 when I sell my course on Udemy. Well, that's why I think there's a really big market for courses that give 80% revenue or 60. And what I would prefer that you do, since, since you're making a new website, because you can go to Udemy, go to all the course makers, people that already have a course and say, hey, I have something better for you over here until the, the latest day of 2023, you get 85% of every sale you make instead of 25 over here at Udemy. What is going on? Okay, that was interesting. Instead of 25, and the admin takes 75, you get 85%. So when 100 people, but so when 100,000 people buy your course for $10 and you get 75%, that means you get $750,000, which is nice. So, or uh, sorry, sorry, uh, $850,000. And then I can say, okay, from the 1st of 2024, it will become 
60, 40, and then you have already a really big website with a lot of instructors, and then you can make serious money with it. By the way, also with the 50%, you can make serious money. It's, it's all about making the website attractive, getting a lot of traffic, getting a lot of high quality courses. So people come here, buy courses, and man, when, when this takes off, you can make a lot of money and help a lot of people learn new things. If you take a look at Facebook, why does Mark Zuckerberg make a lot of money? Because there are a lot of users. Why do they, do they bought Instagram? Because they have a lot of users. Why is LinkedIn so popular? And, and uh, do people make a lot of money on LinkedIn? Because there are a lot of users. So it's all about getting a lot of users. Well, you get a lot of instructors when you create really interesting rates for them. So that was all free what I just told you and showed you about my earnings. This is fine. Uh, somehow you can still make more money. So you can say, hey, by the way, if you buy this course, you also pay $2 uh, administration costs, but I, I, I will turn this off, but you can turn this on if you want to. The minimum withdrawal amount, well, I like to make it big, like $500, because I don't want people to charge money every time they make $10 because then my administration becomes a big mess because I get a lot of withdrawals. So I say $500 and the minimum days before the balance is available. So somebody buys a course or let's say people buy a course for $500 in one day. After how many days can my instructor get that money? Well, I would like to say 16 because on my website, I will say you have a 13 day or a 15 day money back guarantee. So if people don't like the course, they can get a refund. So if they did not ask for a refund after 15 days and the 16 day, that money will be placed on their accounts and then they will see it over here, total earnings, or uh, they will see it over here. But after 16 days, then they can go to withdrawals. And if you don't see this page, no problem. I go to the backend settings, permalinks, and I save it. And I save it. So now if I go to my dashboard and I go to withdrawals, the current balance is immediately available. So when people buy courses right now, I see that balance over here, but after 16 days, I'll see it over here. And when it's at least $500, then my instructors can withdraw the money. And then my instructor can go to the withdrawal preferences they can select the method and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Right now I use PayPal. You can use the e-check or bank transfer and probably more options will be added. And the bank instruction is payment from Stu to me. So that's it about uh, the revenue monetization. Then I can go to design. If you go to the uh, course list or the marketplace, how many, um, Courses should be displayed per row, four, three, two, or one. I like three. Do I want to have a course filter? How many courses do I want to display per page? And do I want to have preferred course filters? Oh, yes. So I turn it all on. And then we can go to the instructor list layout. So if there's a list with all the instructors, which uh, I wonder if you want to have that on your website, but if you want that, how should it be displayed? And then there's also the instructor profile, public profile layout. Well, if I go to my profile or I go over here, even better, and I click on the author, the course instructor, it looks like this. I can change the look and feel to minimal. Also here for the students, save the details or save the changes. And then it looks like this. I prefer that. And then over here, what do I want to display? Instructor information, Q and A's, all the Q and A's uh, for the courses they've created, more information about the author, their level duration, all this stuff. Do I want to show that? If so, yes. And if I want to change this, change this information, I can go to my dashboard, scroll down, go to the settings over here. I can upload an image. I can upload a cover image. 
And I can change my information over here. And if I would say I'm a web designer and I love making websites, I can say something about myself, update my profile. And then when people go to my author page, by clicking here, like, okay, yeah, he has this course, but uh, who is this? Oh, he has a lot of good reviews. This is by his biography. This is uh, are the courses he has. Okay, nice. So then we can go to the colors and I like to choose custom colors. I want to give it a greenish effect. So I click over here and I click on the colors, red, green, blue, twice. Then I say hashtag 19AF00, hit enter. The second one, select it a darker color. The text color, I like it to be hashtag 222222. And the light color, I can also go over here. And then I save the changes and look at this, especially when I go to the dashboard. Everything that was blue is now green. So if I change it to orange, everything will look orange. That's how you can change the look and feel really easily. And then one more thing over here, the video player, it looks a little bit uh, stupid when you see clearly that it is the YouTube player or the Vimeo player that has been used on the website because people upload their videos to YouTube or Vimeo. So over here, we can make sure the tutor players is displayed instead of the YouTube player or the Vimeo player. I save the changes, then we can go to advanced. Do I want to use the Gutenberg editor to create courses? Yes. Do I want to hide course products on the shop page? Yes, because uh, if I go to the WooCommerce shop page, I do not want to display the, the courses. Because when I create a course, I also need to create a, a WooCommerce product. We're going to talk about this later. The course archive page, well, for me, that's the, the marketplace. Instructor registration page is already uh, working. So uh, yes, student registration page, yes, the lesson, lesson permalink, lesson. If I go live in my course, I can insert my YouTube API key. Uh, what I also like, people uh, can see this when they, their uh, profile is not complete. So they will be urged to complete their profile because that looks better. And the better it looks, the more people will buy courses. And that's the whole goal. Enable the tutor login. So not a standard WordPress login page, but the tutor login page. And when people uninstall their own user stuff, do you want the data to be erased? Well, not yet. And I can also turn this to a maintenance mode. And if I save it, and I open this website in an incognito window, it says under maintenance, sorry for the inconvenience. I can turn it on over here. Okay. Well, right now it looks like this, our website. I want to do a few more things before I start to add my first course. I want to go to the customizer and upload my own logo. I created a really simple logo and I can adjust it by clicking here and I change the logo. I select the files and I go for this logo. I always copy the title to my alt text and description. Select, I do not crop it. So there it goes. I can also change it for the retina display. So it looks better. Uh, you see a lot of different headers. We're going to talk about headers later. I want to go back and then I want to go to the site identity and I want to add a site icon. So it needs to be square. I use PNG. So I click on select site icon, upload files. Here's the fave icon. Now when I select it, script to cropping, it will be displayed over here. Stew the me. Great. So before we are going to adjust all this stuff over here and the colors. So it is time to create our first course on a website. Let me show you how to do it. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let's go. Let me add my first course. How can I do that? I can go to my dashboard. I can create a new course or I can hover over here, create a new course, or I can go to the backend, the tutor LMS courses. 
and add new. So the first thing we need for our course is a course title. So I call this one the YouTube affiliate marketing course. And then I can give a description that can be a long description. It can be a short description. You can also show a video as your description. So do whatever you want. You can do both. Learn how to make money, make money on YouTube through affiliate marketing. That's enough. Then I want to go to the course tab over here, scroll down, go to course categories, and I can give this a category. Well, I can say this falls under the category passive income. I click on add new category, but I also can say it falls under the category passive income and affiliate marketing. So I can create a subcategory. So I uh, say affiliate marketing is a subcategory of affiliate marketing. And when I click on add new category, it will be here, be here below. So in that way, if you have a lot of courses, you can create some structure, which is a good thing. Then we have tags. So uh, keywords that has everything to do with your course. So in my case, affiliate marketing, comma, passive income, YouTube video creation at revenue. Okay, then the featured image I created it in Photoshop. I have tutorials on the internet on how to do that, or there are other tutorials on people that can do it even better than I do. I should clean up my desk. <laughs> and what I also always like to do, I like to remove the dashes of my title in my title. Then copy the whole title, place it in the alt text and place it in the description. Set the featured image. There it is. And then here I can have an excerpt. And it can be that you see all this information here below. It, it changes sometimes. So uh, I'm not sure. If I click on publish and I go back to the website and I go back to my course. Okay, sometimes I see that information over here. But uh, this time I don't, so um, it's okay. I go back to the course area, the course tab, and if I don't see that, I can click over here. Course. I scroll down. Oh yeah, here the tutor starting schema. That means that you will be uh, found better in Google, and that the way that the course page is displayed just looks better. So people get more information. So um, if I go to Google and I search for affiliate marketing course. I skip all the ads. This area will be displayed better when you use schema markup. So the schema type is course. The name of this course, the owner is Freddy Korpershoek. The description. Let's go back to course. Is this one? And the provider name is Stu the me. Update. Great. And then now I can close this. Then I can scroll down over here to the course settings. Well, I can have a maximum of students. So I can say only 100 people can buy this course. If you want that, do that. If you don't want that, leave it at zero. The difficulty level. I say this for all levels. Make the course public. If you turn this on, people can get the course for free. They don't have to enroll. They just have access to the course. Well, I don't want that. And enable questions and answers for every course. So people can have specific questions for this course and then you can, you can give an answer and people that want to buy the course can have the same questions and then they see those questions, your, my answers, and then everything is fine. Do I want this course to be a free course or a paid one? Well, I want it to be a paid one. Let me update it because when I want this to be a paid one, I need to create the course in WooCommerce. Later in the tutorial, I will show you how to create a course from the front page. Then you don't have to do that, but right now we need to do that. It's just a manual step. It's just the way it is. It's fine. Product add new. This is everything you need to do. Create the course title. I do the same. YouTube affiliate marketing course. Select add product data. Simple product for tutor. I make this one $197. Another sale. I go to the product image 
I select the same image. And I publish it. That's it. Now I go to the Tudor LMS courses, to the YouTube affiliate marketing course. I scroll down and I select the product YouTube affiliate marketing course. Update. I'll take a look at the course builder later. What will people learn? Write here the course benefits one per line. What affiliate marketing is, how to apply affiliate marketing the right way, how to do market research. So just fill in what people will learn, how to learn something new, targeted audience. Who am I focusing on? People that want to travel the world whenever they want, where they want, whatever. Maybe people that want to travel the world, work when they want, how much they want, and wherever they want. People that want to leave their job, people that are really willing to go all in. The course duration, well, 31 hours and 28 minutes. Are there materials included? A list of assets you will be providing. So maybe you have a PDF with a top 25 affiliate products. So I can say that top 25 affiliate products to promote requirements, a computer, a phone with camera, uh, it's not necessary. So, okay. And an internet connection. That's it. Of course, introduction. I want to go to YouTube, to my YouTube studio content. I want to go for this video. So I, I select uh, YouTube, paste it. Okay. I click on update and now I want to see how my course looks. We can do that over here on the homepage. YouTube affiliate marketing course, YouTube affiliate marketing course, no ratings yet. By Ferdy Korpershoek, start learning. I see no price because I'm logged in. So let me click here. Okay. What I see when I use YouTube, you see other uh, suggestions. So I don't like that. You also see this, you see it's a hook. So I prefer Vimeo, but I just want to show you that you can also use YouTube. So I see the title, the categories. If I click on the category, I see all the courses in that category. So I can compare courses, especially when I have a lot of courses. The progress, nothing yet. It's for all levels. Zero people have enrolled. The, the time of the course, the duration, when it's updated for the last time about the author, what is included, what are the requirements, what are the texts, for which audience am I, is this, this course? And um, you can see reviews, questions and answers, and announcements. So everybody that's enrolled in this course, I can give them, send them an announcement. Great, but I don't see the course content. So that's the latest thing I want to focus on. Edit course. And now look how easy this is. I go to the course builder, add a new topic. So we have topics and lessons. So topic is like a chapter or a module. So the first one is of course the introduction and I can say something about the introduction. What is affiliate marketing? How can you apply it the right way? Add the topic and in the topic I can have lessons and quizzes. So I click on lesson, I can say introduction. Welcome. First thing you need to do is sign up for the affiliate marketing community, Facebook page, something like that, or whatever you want to do. So you can have a page with content like this. So it can be a block kind of information. Keep in mind when following this course that 
blah, blah, blah. So that's what we can have. We can have uh, content through this simple builder. I can have a featured image. I have no idea why I should use that. And I can say that I don't use a video source. And that means if I update it, open this in a new tab, go to the website, go to the course, start learning. That the introduction is text. I can have extra cells, size files, and there are, can be comments. But let's go to lesson two. This is what I prefer. Why affiliate marketing? That's the title. Then I go to Vimeo. Okay, over here, copy the link, copy the video link. And then over here, I use Vimeo, paste it, and I can also paste it over here and see how long the video takes. Two minutes and 58 seconds. I can have an attachment, a PDF or something. So uh, let me upload a file. Let me search for top 25. There it is. Update lesson, update, refresh this page. So this is a text lesson and this is a video lesson. You see, you don't see the video player. You see a Tudor LMS player. I can have an exercise file. I can download it. I can leave a comment. Whoa, I really like the 25 affiliate products. Do you promote them all? Submit. Okay, great. So what I need to do now, lesson two, lesson three, the wrong way of doing affiliate marketing. I can go to Vimeo. Select it. This video was six minutes. It still is. And then if I want to add a second chapter or module, I click on new topic. And I say prepare for success. Add the topic. In the topic, we can add a lesson. So 2.1. Let me go a little bit faster. Introduction. Vimeo. Nine minutes and 12 seconds. Update the Netflix generation. Copy. Let's take a look. How long does the video take? Nine and a half minutes. Okay. The Netflix generation. Okay. Vimeo. Nine minutes, 29 seconds. Paste URL. Update. Etc. I can also add quizzes. We're going to talk about it later. So right now, when I refresh this, it looks like this. I can go to the second module, watch this video. I can go back. And when I have not bought the course yet, I can see the overview if I want to. I can also hide it. How great would it be if people would go to our website? They can buy a course, pay with their favorite payment provider or payment method, and then they get access to the course after paying at once. Well, that is what we will configure right now. It looks great, but now I want to make sure that people can buy the course. We're going to do more to this course. We're going to add quizzes and assignments. But right now I want to activate a payment method so people can really start paying money for this course and then get access to the course at once. And in order to do that, we need to configure a few things. I go to the back end to WooCommerce settings, accounts and privacy. And I want to make sure that when people buy a course, they also create an account so they can log in and watch the course they bought. I save the changes. And by the way, also when people come back and they're not logged in and they want to buy something, they can log in before they buy it. So they don't have to leave all their details again. Okay, then I go to, or if I go to payment methods over here, 
I see we can add a, a better payment method. And in this case, I go to plugins, add new. And I search for PayPal for WooCommerce. WooCommerce PayPal payments install now. I activate the plugin and then we can configure it really easy. PayPal payments is almost ready to get started. Connect your account. If you want to learn how to create a PayPal account and search for how to create a PayPal account business. And there you go. Simon is doing that for me. I don't have to explain that. I click on connect your account. I already have an account. You can choose business or personal. So there you go. I want to activate PayPal. The great thing is people cannot only pay with PayPal, but also with credit card and other payment methods like ideal. I really like that. I agree and connect. And this is so easy. This is so easy. Look at this. I don't want to give them feedback right now. I'm in the middle of a tutorial. Can't you see that? Well, they can see a lot, but they cannot see that. Go back to the WooCommerce developers. So I can consider myself to be, to be a developer. And then really important. Let me zoom in a little bit. Enable the PayPal gateway. Save the changes. Now I go to payments. This one is turned on PayPal. And for now, that's fine. So we've configured quite a few things already. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let's put it to the test and let's buy one of the courses as a visitor. So in order to test this, let me make the course a little bit cheaper. So I go to, I go to WooCommerce products and over here, quick edit. You know what? I make this $10 update. Now I open this in an incognito window. I scroll down here. It is $10. I click on it. There's a video over here that I can watch. Okay. Okay. Beautiful information over here. Okay. I add it to the cart and I'm new. So I click on register. Now my first name is 30 to uh, create a beautiful username. Ready, create a password, confirm that password. I scroll down and I agree with the terms and conditions and click on register. Great. Now I add it to the cart. I view the cart. And I can proceed to the checkout. Again, I need to fill in my details. Ferdy from the Netherlands. Okay. I've read and agreed to the terms and I want to pay with a Dutch payment provider. I can pay with PayPal, but I want to use this one. And this is for real. Continue. I want to use my bank. I want to log in. So right now on my phone, I'm logged in. I pay the money. So I'll send you back to the seller. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Now I can click over here. And now I can watch this. So there's the introduction, which is not the video, but just some text. Then I go to the second video. And I get a message. Payment received. And I can start to watch this course. Wow, this is, oh, this is how it works. Oh, by the way, if I go to PayPal, what I can see over here is that there's a payment from Ferdy Korpsuk, $10. So all the money will be added to my account and then it will be sent to people when they ask for a withdrawal. The same you can do with Stripe. I have a different tutorial about it. You can go to YouTube and search for Stripe Ferdy. And I show you how you can use Stripe with WooCommerce. And then there's another payment method. So this works. And now let's take a look at the dashboard. Over here, it says I made $10 today. The top seller this month is this course, $10. But now let's go to the fun part. I go to the website. I, for the corpse, sold a course. So now if I go to my dashboard and I scroll down. I see that my total earnings are $8.50. So when this reaches 500, why? Because I get 85% of all the sales. Remember over here, at 
to the LMS settings. Monetization, I said 85%. So not 25% like Udemy, no, 85%. So I go to my dashboard again, and now I can go to withdrawals. And if I do not get a refund after 15 days, then this $8.50 will be transferred to this area. And when this is at least $500, I can withdraw it over here by clicking here. And then that money will go to my account and I can change my withdrawal preferences. And I need to use my PayPal email account in order to do that. Why? Because here at the settings, at Tutor LMS settings, I said I want to make use of PayPal. But I can also use bank transfer and e-check. So I'm happy it's working. So I, as the website owner, made $1.50. That means that if a thousand courses are sold through this website per day, and I made, uh, and they're all $10, and I make $1.50 per course, that's a nice amount of money per day. So that's how we can add a payment method. So two more things I want to show you. I want to talk about coupon codes. You can create coupon codes for all your instructors and about refunds. So if you want to create a coupon code as a website owner, as an administrator, you can go to WooCommerce coupons. I already created one. I can add a coupon and it can be a fixed car discount. So you can give $10 of discount. So let's say $10 and the coupon amount is 10. And you can say uh, if it allows free shipping while well, we're talking about course, so that's not applicable to us. You can say it's only for the rest of October and then use this restriction. You can say uh, minimum spent is $20. So every course is cheaper than $20. You can not use this discount uh, maximum. You can say it's only for a certain product. So for a certain course, so only for the YouTube affiliate marketing course. So if somebody tries to use this for a different course, it will say that's not possible. I can also exclude products. You can also assign it to uh, categories or exclude categories or certain emails, only Gmail <laughs> emails. I see no reason why, but hey, it's a possibility. Over here, there are more limits. You can say there are only 100 coupons available. So you can send an email to your email list like, hey, for the next 100 people, I have $10 of discount. So that's what you can do. You can also say, 50% off and then we change it to percentage 50 and then the same uh, uh, rules apply over here or you can say you know what you get a free course well that's what I've already created leave so uh, let me bring this to the trash okay so I go to one of my courses now I'm logged in as Lady Gaga. Let me see which course she already has enrolled. Oh, she already has all the courses. Okay. I go to courses. Okay. I add this one to the cart. I view the cart. What I can do now, I can enter the coupon free, apply, bomb, zero dollars. So that's how you can create coupon codes. And something else, if I log in as the administrator again, if people bought a course, they want a refund, they send you an email. You can uh, write that down in the terms and conditions like, hey, if you want to have a refund, it's possible within 15 days. Send me an email to info at studentme.com and we'll take care of it. And give me the reason so we can improve our product or our website. Well, if people ask for a refund, you go to WooCommerce orders. And then over here, you click on the order. Scroll down, click on refund. That's how easy it is. Okay, and then you need to go. Okay, let's say this is, uh, let's see, Ferdy Corp at Gmail. Okay, then you give them a refund. So let's say I would do that. Then you go to Tudor LMS Pro, enrollments, you search for Ferdy. Corp at gmail.com. Click over here. Bulk action. Cancel. Apply. Yes. Okay, canceled. So now, if Mr. Ferdy Corp 
So now if I log in as Freddy Corp and I go to my enrolled courses, it's not there anymore. And then here I see a message. I'm talking about this in the future of this tutorial because I recorded this later. It says Freddy Corp secure enrollment request for YouTube affiliate marketing course has been declined. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to adjust our header. We're going to configure it. There are quite a few things you can do. I have chosen to edit it in a certain way, but feel free to configure it to your own wishes. You don't have to do exactly what I do. Give it your own spin and now let's make something beautiful. Let's take a look at the header. We can make this look better. If we go to udemy.com, we have the logo, the categories, subcategories. Uh, people can search for something. So WordPress, a lot of courses. Then there's Udemy Business. You can become an instructor and then you have your own area. Well, it looks a little bit the same, but let's adjust it a little bit. We go to the customizer and we go to the tutor starter options panel. And let's go through all these options over here. First, the colors, the body background color, the body text color and the link color. Well, the text color, I want it to be two, 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 two. Yes. Publish. Then I go back. I go to the layout and yeah, I'm actually quite okay with the, the, the width of the website. If you want to adjust it, you can do that over here. You can say 1200 pixels and then the width of the website will be adjusted. When you do that, let's say 1140, make sure that an elementor is the same. So I close this. I click on edit with Elementor. When you're on the home page, you can do that. First, we need to recreate a kit by clicking here. Recreate kit, save the changes, go back to your website, edit with Elementor. We're getting there. And then over here at the left, click on the three lines, go to the site settings, to the layout, and also make sure it's 1140 over here so it aligns perfectly. Great. We can close this. Click here and go back to the customizer, to the tutor starter options panel and back to the layout. Well, that's perfect now. Let's go to the typography. The font family is inter, but you can change it. I like to use open sans. It's my default font. You can go to fonts.google.com and find a lot of fonts. And all those fonts you see over here can be used in your website. You can also search by category. If you see something you like, you can use that. Okay, the body typography. The, the, the size of the text it can be bigger. It can be smaller. I like it the way it is. For the headers, I like to use pop-ins. So I leave it as it is. And I go back and I go to the header. I already changed the logo and here we can select our header type. We'll take a look at it in a minute. First, I want to change these colors over here. The link, the menu link color, I want it to be two, 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 two two and uh, always you can make things green if you want to see what is adjusting. So I know I know uh, this area is changing. So I say two, 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 two. And now it's adjusted. Great. The active link and hover colors right now. This one is active. If I want to change it to the green one. That is possible. The card color over here. Well, I also like it to be this color. The button background color, also this one. And then there's a border. Well, I don't want to have a border. So I make it green and I get rid of it. And I have a border radius. If I don't want to have a border radius, I say zero and then it will be a square. But I like it. And then the button text color is this one. So what I can say over here, people that are not logged in see this. If you're logged in, you don't see this. You can get started. You can become an instructor. So people that visit my website can become an instructor. So I can say teach or I can say become an instructor. But right now 
the website cannot handle it. It can if I get rid of this. And then over here I say forward slash instructor dash registration forward slash. Let me publish it and check it. I go to the back end to pages. I search for instructors. There it is. I click on quick edit, go to the slug, copy it to make sure it's uh, the right one. I go to the customizer again, to the tutor starter options panel, header, scroll down, forward slash, and paste it. I can change the typography of the button. I can make it uppercase, but uh, I'm fine. I say none, publish. Okay, if I make the website smaller by command or control minus, you see right now it doesn't fit everything because we have this big menu over here with a lot of items, which I do not need. But what we don't see is this button when you're logged in. So let me see how it will look on the website. It still looks fine. We have the logo, the search bar, the menu. And if you want to buy something, you will see it over here. And if I would log out or open this in an incognito window, that will look perfect. The logo, the search area, and become an instructor. And if I click over here, I can become an instructor. So I go to the customizer again. I want to show you a few other options. Header. So I can have the default header. Logo at the left, menu at the center, and then here, the personal area, the, 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 the account area. I can make it a transparent header. And then I should have a transparent logo. I personally do not prefer this. I can have the header with the search bar, the one we uh, had by default. We can have the full width header. So the logo is totally at the left. So if I make the website smaller, it will stick totally to the left, totally to the right. And then we can have the same thing, but with the menu in the center. And actually, I like that option. So I leave that. So because our website is not that big yet, I don't need the search bar. If your website becomes bigger, you can have a search bar and then people can search for courses. Well, the header background color is white. I'm okay with that. The link color, this one, we talked about everything else already. So I go back. If you want to have a blog, there are settings over here. How should, should blog post be displayed? There's a footer. We'll talk about it later. Right now, I want to change the, the image to a white one. So I go to upload files, select files, desktop, student me, white, open it, choose the image. And then also here, I choose that image. So now it says student me, and then I can click over here. Got it, and I can change the text over here. Bam, and get 80% of the revenue. And over here, when people have questions, you can have a phone number over here and let people send an email to info at your website, Studemy, in my case. Then there are quick links, you can change them, but right now I leave it as it is. Close it. So right now it looks like this, Studemy, the marketplace, course list, and the pages. So let's take a look at this area over here. I can do that by going to the back end, appearance, menus. And what I want to show actually, let me select the primary menu. I want to show the home page. I want to show the page with all the courses. So there's the course list. I want to have it. I get rid of this one by clicking here, remove. And then I want to get rid of all the pages because I can show those in the footer. And then also here, if I go to Udemy or I go to Skillshare, what I see, I see categories, Udemy business instructor. I don't see about us and all that stuff. Also here, browse, and then you see all the categories. So I want to do the same. I want to show the course list so people can see all the courses. So I can say courses. 
and then I don't need a subscription or contact. What, but what I do want to have is all the categories. So I go to the custom links. I say hashtag, so the link goes to nothing. I say categories. And now I want to add all the course categories. Let me save it for now. I don't know why I do not see them, but I want to see the, the course categories over here. I don't see them, so I go back to the homepage, to the customizer. Then I go to menus, primary menu, add items. And over here, I, I do see them, so I don't know why I did not see them at the back end. Course categories, I want to add them all. Business, health, design, development, passive income, and affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is a uh, subcategory of passive income, so I can make that a subcategory. First, below category, so I can make it a sub item of passive income, but first I want to make business sub item of categories. Also this one, so I drag it to the right. And then over here, I can drag this even more to the right. And then you'll see it will look like this. I can hover and then at passive income, it looks like this. Okay, then I go back. I go back to the tutor starter options panel to the header and then at the typography I can change it, make it bigger. I think that looks great. Publish, close. And now we change our header from this to this. It looks cleaner. We can go to all the courses. We can adjust this page using Elementor. Then we have the course categories. So I can go to all the passive income courses and then it looks like this. Back to the homepage. Great. Close this and I close this. In the next part of this tutorial, I will show you how you can create a quiz in your course. We have our course over here and it is filled with beautiful videos, but there is no quiz. In order to create one, we edit the course. I scroll down to the course builder and then for the introduction part, I want to add a quiz. So not a lesson, but a quiz. By clicking on this plus, I can give this quiz a title. So how about the affiliate marketing basics quiz? Just to see if people understand what I've teach them in the first module. So that's what I can say. Let's see how much you have learned. I will not say that, but you can. I can add my first question uh, after I click on save and next. And the question is the right way to do affiliate marketing is by adding value around a product you promote question mark. It's a simple true or false question. And if I click over here, I can have multiple questions, true or false, single choice, multiple choice, open ended, fill in the blanks. And then you see more options that are available in the pro version. So an answer is required. I can randomize the order from yes and no or from true and false. So I don't use that. And when people get it right, they get one point. So I can give a description. I don't need it. I just want to say that the answer is true. So I select this one. If the answer is false, check this one. So that's a very simple first question. And now I can add a second question. Let's make it a single choice question. So here's the question. What is affiliate marketing? The answer is required. I can randomize the answers. When people get it right, they get one point and I click on a new option. The first answer is selling your own products on the internet. I don't need to have an image for my answer. I only want to use text. So I click on update answer. Then I go for the second option, title, promoting someone else's product or service in exchange for a commission. Update. 
Then the third one, giving away free stuff to build your email list. And then the fourth one, saying no to hamburgers for at least five hours. Update the answer. Well, the, the correct one is the second one. Then I randomize the answers. I click on add to questions. So now we have two questions. I can add a third one. And this time it is multiple choice. So we can have multiple answers. And the question is how to approach affiliate marketing the wrong way? Question mark. Answer is required. I randomize the order. I get points and I add my first option. So let me fast forward with the answers. So there are four answers and there can be multiple answers that are right. So the wrong way to do affiliate marketing is adding your affiliate marketing links in Facebook groups. Placing your affiliate marketing links on your social media accounts is perfectly fine. And messaging people with your affiliate links is wrong. And printing out affiliate links, placing them all over your town is also wrong. So add it to the questions. So now we have three questions. I click on save and next. And then I can say you have one minute to follow this quiz. Uh, you can get the answers at the end of the quiz, but I prefer to use the review mode so they see the result immediately when they click on it and click on next or the retry mode. So when it's wrong, they can uh, try it again. And you can say in total, you can uh, do questions three times over in the whole quiz. Well, I like to re like the review mode and uh, the passing grade is 80%. Max questions allowed to answer. So if you have a quiz with uh, 50 questions, you can say, I only want to show 20 so people don't know exactly which questions will occur will appear so um but it's not necessary because we only have three questions and there are the advanced settings i like the quiz to start automatically uh, the question layout yeah i can say that there should be one single question per time or that all the questions are below each other well i like to have one question per time so i just say set question layout view the question is order i can make it random and I can also hide the question number. Save and next I update it. Now if I click on preview, preview in a new tab, I can start learning. Then I go to the course, it's one minute and it starts right now. Okay, how to approach affiliate marketing the wrong way. Um, messaging people with your affiliate links is wrong. Printing out your affiliate links and them over the town is wrong your affiliate links in your Facebook groups is wrong. Placing your affiliate links on social media. Okay, that's okay. Submit a next. And I see it's the correct answer. The right way to do affiliate marketing is by adding value around the product you promote. Well, that's what I teach over here. So I say true. Submit a next. It's correct. What is affiliate marketing? It's giving away free stuff. No, it's promoting someone else's product. Yes, this is it. Okay. Submit the quiz. And ladies and gentlemen, we passed. Assuming we did this together, because I think you all so had the same answers in your mind. But I just clicked on the button. I can see the details about all the questions. Okay, great. What I can say in the settings. Let me go back to Tutor LMS settings. Course. Then over here, course completion process. I can say it is strict, so students have to complete, pass all the lessons and quizzes to mark a course as complete. So when you select this option, people that enroll in your course cannot proceed to the next lesson before they pass the quiz. So we create our course with uh, modules, with lessons and with quizzes. Let me show you a few more things uh, we have on our course page. If I'm logged in as Ferdy, the person who bought the course for $10, so I go to my dashboard, then I see that I have this area, complete your profile. So I set your profile photo over here. Let's do this one. Then I go to my dashboard again. It says I need to set my bio so I can say something about myself. I like myself. Update. 
I go to my dashboard and then the third step, set a withdrawal method. Uh, I choose PayPal and I need to fill in my PayPal account. And it needs to have it really be uh, an email address that is linked to PayPal. Otherwise, the money will not arrive. So I go to my dashboard. And now my profile is complete. Great. And I see that information over here. I can follow the course. And if I like the course, I can go to reviews. I can write a review. Give it five stars and say, whoa, this is amazing. I have learned so much last week i had my first thousand dollar day passive income day i really got this message from someone who followed my course so i know it works there are also people that follow my course and make no money at all so it's it's all depending on the person that's taking the course refresh so now i have a five star rating and if I scroll down and I go to reviews, there it is. Well, it looks better when you have more ratings, but right now I'm happy with the result, but it's pending. So if I would uh, go to this website in an incognito window and I go to the course, and I go to reviews, there's no review. So what I need to do, I need to log in as an administrator and then approve this. How can we do that? I log out and I log in as the administrator. Then I go to Tutor LMS to reports reviews the step over here and then over here i can change this to published and now it is published for everyone to see so let me check there it is visible for everybody i can also as an editor edit my review maybe i give it a one and then i submit my review and then somebody replies and fixes the things i'm mentioning in my review and then i can say okay now it's five star course I can submit it again and then I need to accept it again. Maybe I have a question. I can go to Q&A. So if I am not willing to put myself in front of a camera, camera, can I still be successful with affiliate marketing? Question mark ask the question okay now as the administrator go to my course go to the questions and say yes you still can i did not show myself in in my videos and still was successful it can but in the long run, it can be better for your audience to show your face. And now when people go to my website, they can see the questions and they can see the answers. We're going to talk about announcements. So let me show you how we can let other people become instructors on our website and sell their courses on our website and then split the revenue. I think this is one of the great greatest features of this whole tutorial on of this plugin so let me show you how to set it up now i want to become an instructor so i click on become an instructor i can fill this in but i want to know a little bit more about what is going on what i am I, what am i getting my what am i getting myself into so there's the instructor registration page i want to change that so i go to the website to the back end I go to pages and now I want to go to the registration registration page. Instructor registration. So I click on it. Then I want to copy this code. Command A, Control A, Control or Command C. Get rid of it. Update. Edit with Elementor. I recreate this kit. If you haven't done that before, recreate the kit. Save it, close this, refresh the page. Now it's working. Then I click over here. I go for this area. I drag, sorry, I click over here. I drag the text editor over here and I paste the code. Great. Now 
let me talk a little bit about Elementor. Uh, Elementor is an amazing page builder that will help you to create websites. And in order to set it up the right way, I go to the three lines below each other to the user preferences. Now to change the user interface theme to dark and turn on the editing handles. And I click on update. Great. I go to all these areas, uh, these uh, dots over here. Hover over here, click on the plus, click on the plus again, click on this area. And now I go to all the elements. I drag this one over here and I say, start teaching on Stu and me. I bring it to the center, but now I click here again. I go to the side settings. To the global colors and I want to change the primary color to this green color. Copy. I paste it over here. Then the secondary color is fine. And the text I want it to be two, 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 two. Great. Update. I click on the X. Then I click on this area or you know what? I will duplicate this area and I will say start teaching at stewdemy.com and earn 85% of every course you sell until the 33rd or of December 2023. Well, this doesn't allow, sound, looks that appealing. So uh, I go to the style. Change it to the text, change the typography to something else. Open sans. By the way, go to this area, make it an H2 tag. Okay, that's already the case. Make the text smaller. Great. Well, if I take a look at how this looks. Okay, one more thing. I click over here on this section. I want to make the width 600. That means that the form that people will fill in in order to become an instructor is a little bit smaller. Otherwise, it doesn't look that appealing in my opinion. Update. And I click on the three lines. I click on exit and I want to select the WP dashboard. Apply. Leave. Great. I open this in an incognito window. I want to become an instructor. Now I see this text over here and I can fill in my details. So my name is George Town. My username will be George Town. My email, ferdycorpushook at gmail.com. I create a password and I click on register as an instructor. Your application will be reviewed and the results will be sent to you by email. But now, I'm a user immediately. So I go to my dashboard. I can set my profile photo by clicking here. And boy, do I have a photo. <laughs> Over here, this is George. I can fill in my bio. I am a full stack web developer. I teach about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Python, Ajax, Webnode, C++, I don't know, that. Update. But look at this. I can create my first course by clicking here. Then I go to the backend. And this works a little bit odd because now I can create my title, which is HTML and CSS course. Learn how to create a comprehensive website using HTML and CSS. Now I can fill in all the same details as I did before. Uh, let me go to the course and then the featured image selected. And boy, do I have a featured image on my desktop. There it is. Okay, what I will do, I will finish this information and then I will be back with you.
So let me walk you through it. It's an HTML and CSS course. Learn how to create a comprehensive website using HTML and CSS. Maximum students zero. It's um, for beginners. It's not a public course because I want people to pay. People can ask questions and answers. It's a paid course and then they need to select a product. And I don't want them to select a product. But the thing is, I need to create that product for them. So this is a little bit weird for people that become an instructor and then need to select a product and they're like, what is going on? So uh, I will show you in a minute how to create this to the front end. It's uh, for the pro version, but then the product will be created automatically. So I leave this blank. The course builder, it works. I added a few lessons. What will I learn? The target audience, the total duration of the course, what are, uh, materials are included. I filled in all this information. And here I've selected the categories, a few tags, a featured image, and a schema markup. So as a new user, I click on publish, submit for review. That's a great thing because people cannot at once publish something without me knowing what they're publishing. So now I go to the website, to the back end. And by the way, over here, there's no course yet. But if I would go to the back end and I go to courses, I see, hey, there's a new course from Georgetown pending. It's free because um, you could not select a course. So I can check it, view the course. Okay, nice. But you will learn. Okay, some videos. Looking good. Okay. Well, I think it's okay. So what I can do, I can change from pending to publish, but first I need to go to WooCommerce products, add new HTML and CSS course. It's a tutor product. And then I need to uh, get in touch with the creator of the course saying, Hey, what price is the course? So let's say it is $27. Then again, here, I want to add the featured image as a product image. Okay. Now I click on publish. Then I need to go to the course again, click on it. I take it over. Sorry, George, I'm the boss. And then I select HTML, HTML and CSS course, publish, publish. And when I publish it, it's really published, published. So I can view the course. Great. And if I go to the homepage, there it is. So that's how it works. It, it has some workarounds, which I do not like, but in the pro version, that's all been taken care of. Great. So now when somebody buys this course, we open this in an incognito window. I see the course. $27. I can add it to the cart or I can check it out. I can watch this video. It works. So somebody signed up as an instructor, then he could create a course and submit it for a preview. I previewed it. I liked it. I created a product in WooCommerce and linked it to the course. Now people can buy this. And when people buy this now, he makes per sale 27, 27 divided by 100 times 85. He makes 22.95 and I make around $4. And then when my website becomes really popular at the end of 2023, I bring it back to 60, 40, 60 for the course creator, 40 for me. And then I start to make a lot of money, all still using the free version. In this tutorial, we will make use of a free page builder called Elementor. It's an amazing page builder. This will not be a complete Elementor tutorial. I have different tutorials about it on my YouTube channel, but I want to show you how to adjust the homepage and, and show you the basics of Elementor. And I will also show you how to adjust a few other pages. So let's get right to that right now. Hey, wait. Yes, right now. So let me show you what you can do in order to make this look so much better. We're going to edit this homepage with Elementor. So I click on edit with Elementor. And we worked in Elementor before, but I did not explain really how everything worked. Um, why? Because uh, Elementor is renewing their page builder. So I cannot talk too much about it because in a few months that will be 
not uh, relevant anymore. But what will be the same in the new version of Elementor is how to change the background. So let me show you how you can make this look so much more professional. I click over here, then I can go to the style and let me show you the power of images. I go to 30corp.com forward slash I stuck. Then you can buy images over here. Sometimes the first ones are for free. So I, I search for a woman on a laptop, maybe smiling. And then if I see something, uh, an image, I think that could work with my website. Sorry, the website is in Dutch. I can use that image. So I found an image. So uh, let me see. Download history. This image over here. So I can download it. It's a really big image. 9 megabytes. So what I prefer to do, open it in Photoshop. Change the aspect ratio, uh, crop it over here, change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Um, I put our eyes over here. Rule of thirds. Then save. Export for web. Save for web. Then I bring this back to 1920. The quality to 70 and I save this. I call this one student me. Learn anything online and earn. Then I go to my desktop. Okay, now I click over here. I upload files by clicking on select files and then over here. It's 276 or 61 kilobytes, which is amazing. Remove all the dashes. Copy the title, paste it in the alt text and paste it in the description. Insert the media. Bam! Boom shakalaka. That looks so much better. And what I can do, I can make the size cover and change the attachment to fixed. And then it looks like that. Then I can do a few more things. I can go to the column, style, background type, make it black and then transparent, by dragging the lower bar to the left. Then I can go to the advanced area, increase the padding, go back to the style, to the border, change the border radius, increase it. That's one thing we can do. Or we go to the section, to the background overlay, go for a gradient, select the first color and the second one, make the second one maybe darker. Then I can change the angle from left to right, 90%. I can change the location so I can make it a straight line, play around like that. I prefer to keep it like this. I can also make the second color disappear and then bring the location also a little bit to the left, as you see. So there's a green glow, but here her image, her face is in normal colors. And to be honest, I, I, uh, I don't like this. So, um, can get rid of this or only of the, the border. So um, yeah, that looks okay. Let's get rid of this area. Tutor starter is a community for creative people. Okay. I go to Udemy, not stealing, but let's start learning. That's nice, but I'm not logged in. So how would it look if I was not logged in? If I come here for the first time, new to you to me, lucky you. Okay, that's what you can do. I can say, learn anything, anytime, from anywhere. Wow, that came up to me. Anytime, from 
anywhere at once. I don't know. I'm not a text writer, copywriter. And then I could have a button course overview. Check. Republic, no check. Our courses. And then I can send them to the marketplace. When people hover over it, over the button, I go to style, hover, give it an animation. Great. Update. Let's take a look. Okay. Check our courses. Okay, I should go to courses list instead of the marketplace. So I added this with Elementor again. Courses list. Update. Check our courses. There we go. Then I added this page. I like the, the background thing, the, the mountains, but I don't like the colors. But it seems that the colors are integrated in the background. So what I can do, background overlay. Check this. I grab the same image. That means that I can remove it here at the background. Then I go back to the background overlay, bring it to one. Then I go to the CSS filters and I change the U until it's green. Bam. And then we see the courses over here. And if you want to change this, we talked about it before. Let me show you. I go to the back end to LMS settings, design. And then over here, I can change from three to four to adjust, adjust all this information. And then it will also be changed over here. If I go to a certain category, it looks like that. Great. So that's how we can change the layout and really easy if I want to adjust something. I can click here. I can say um, 5,000 learners start with zero. That everything starts from zero. How many instructors? Well, at this moment, three, let's say three. So uh, we can play around with those numbers. Then you can change this or you can remove it. You can go over here to the style, change the color, make it a little bit transparent. Those are the blog posts. And if I do not want to show them, I remove it. I don't want to have special offers. So that's how you can um, build the homepage, adjust it in Elementor. And so far, I think it looks great. So everything we've created so far within our website was with free plugins and a free theme. Now let's take it to the next level with Tudor LMS Pro. Tutor LMS has a pro version, which will make your website even better. It's already great. There are a few things that can be done better, but with Tutor LMS Pro, all those things can be solved. So let me show you what you can do with Tutor LMS Pro and let me show you how to get it. So now it's a matter of getting more people to promote their own courses on your website so you can share the revenue. But if I would invite people to this website and they have to sign up and go through the process I just showed you, I think it's a little bit too technical. There are too much steps. So what I want, I want people to sign up, become an instructor, fill in the details, and then create their course through a front end course builder, not through the back end. And I don't want there to be steps between like, I have to create a product in WooCommerce. I have to contact the instructor like, hey, what's the price of your course? I want everything to be in the front end. And we can do that with Tudor LMS Pro. And you can do so much more with it. Let me show you what you can do with it. If I go to ferdycorp.com forward slash 
Tudor LMS and hit enter. We will be redirected to the website of Tudor LMS. And let's go to the add-ons. We scroll down, we can create a certificate builder with Tudor LMS Pro. You can have a calendar, so when people have assignments, they know when they have to fill in those assignments. Really important notifications. For instance, when somebody buys a course from one of my instructors, that instructor gets a message and I get a message. When I have a new instructor, I get a message. There are a lot of notifications for everything that happens on your website. You can have notifications with Tutor LMS Pro. You can make your website multilingual, work with WooCommerce subscriptions, so people can pay a certain amount per month or per year to have access to all the courses in your website. And over here, you see all those options, more in-depth reports. People have to finish a certain course or quiz before they can continue with another quiz or with another course. You can send emails to all your students. You can show some material for free so people can see the quality of your videos. So they're more eager to buy your course or not buy your course and content drip. So you can say every day there will be a new lesson. So you do not get, over, get overwhelmed by following the course in one day. So in order to get it, we click on pricing. So here are the plans for one website, you pay $149 per year. What you can also do lifetime you pay 3.99 one time and then for the rest of your life you get all the updates and all the features of tutor lms pro for one website as you see lifetime updates priority email support you can also choose to have that for five websites then you pay 5.99 or for unlimited websites so one time fee 999 dollars and then you can use it on unlimited websites and you can even become a web designer that makes these kinds of websites for clients and charge a few thousand dollars for it and then you can set up everything for them by following this tutorial. So, or you go for the annual plan, you pay $2.99 per year, and you can use it for unlimited websites. I prefer the lifetime deal and then for one website. But whatever you do, I can give you 25% discount. So I go for the lifetime deal for one website. So I click on buy now, click on have a coupon, and fill in 3025. Click on apply. Bam! There you go, 299.25 for lifetime access for one website. So now I need to fill in my details over here. My first name, my last name. I'm from the Netherlands. My email address. I need to create a username and a password. Then I can choose my payment method through credit card or through PayPal. I choose credit card. Then I read and I've agreed to all the terms and conditions and then I click on Sign up now. Then you will be redirected. And over here, I can download Tutor LMS. So I download the latest version. Then I go to my website, to the back end, plugins, add a new, upload plugin, and I drag this one over here and I click on install now. Then I want to activate the plugin and activate my license. So it says there's an error with your Tutor Pro license. Automatic updates have been turned off. So I can use Tutor LMS Pro now, but I prefer to fill in my license. So I click on check license and then I go to Themium again to licenses. Add a website for HTTPS stew.me.com. I click on add. I open this. I copy the license key. And then I go to the website and I paste it over here and I click on connect with license key. And now it is connected. Great. If I go to my dashboard, this message will disappear. So now I can make use of Tutor LMS Pro. So the first feature in Tutor LMS Pro is already active. What you can do now, you can let uh, other people, instructors, create courses from the front end of your website. They don't have to go to the back end. They don't have to do weird things with pricings and uh, WooCommerce linking product stuff. No, they can create a complete course from the front end of your website. I think this is amazing. Let me show you how that works. When you have installed Tutor LMS Pro, your instructors can create courses from the front end. Let me show you. I go to LMS, Tutor LMS Pro, 
to instructors and I want to accept Georgetown. Great. Now I want to log in as Georgetown. Like this. Now I go to my dashboard. If I click on create a new course, I do not go to the back end. I go to the front end. So let me walk you through the steps, the course title and the slug. It will be displayed over here. So I would say if your course title is Java script course, you just paste it here and it will take care of itself. About your course, the amount of students, it's for beginners. It's not a public course because I want people to pay for it. We can have Q and A's. We can choose different categories. We can make it a paid course. So let's say one hundred ninety-seven dollars uh, for just ninety-seven dollars. There's a course thumbnail. There you go. And I want to show a Vimeo promo video. And then I can add a new topics. And the lessons. Then I can fill in this information. A lot. You. Total was 90 or 87 hours. Then we can uh, add the text. And then I can submit it. Your course has been submitted. So I log in as an administrator again. No message over here. We'll talk about it later. But now I can go to Tutor LMS courses. And I can change this to publish. Now, if I take a look on the website, complete JavaScript course. If I open this in an incognito window, I see that it will cost $97 instead of $197. I click over here. I see the video. I see the discount, the total hours, all this information through the front end. So that's the first thing that I like about Tutor LMS. People can create courses through the front end instead of through the back end. So from this point on in the tutorial, I will show you a lot of add-ons, a lot of extra functionalities that come with Tutor LMS Pro. There are quite a few. Some, some just take one minute to configure, some take five minutes. So I will not introduce them all. I will just go through them one by one and show you what is possible with Tutor LMS Pro. The next feature is really important. Let's go to the back end to Tutor LMS Pro add-ons. Then we scroll down until we see email. There it is. I turn this on and this makes a big difference. Look at this. I can scroll up again. I go to the settings of Tutor LMS Pro. Now we have this new area, email. First one to upload my logo so I can make the emails I send to my customers, to my instructors, to myself, a little bit more branded. So I go for this logo. It is a height of 53 pixels. And I want to reduce that to 22. So it becomes a little bit smaller. So when I send an email, it can be an email to a student, like congratulations with enrolling in this course. Uh, I want to have the name. So I can say, um, Stu the me, your online learning platform. Or 30 from Stu.me. The reply email address could be 30 at stu.me.com. The email footer text, you can have your site name with the current year, all rights reserved. You can have a link to the privacy policy if you want that. Click here, search for privacy. There it is. Then this one, terms. Okay, save the changes. And now what kind of emails should be sent? Well, first of all, to the students, when they enroll in their course, they should get an email. When they complete a quiz, no. When they completed the course, yes. When a new lesson is published, they should get an email. And all those email templates can be adjusted. But how? Well, 
it took me a long time to find it, but I finally found this button over here. Of course, it's really obvious. Just click here. You see my logo, you are enrolled in a new course. So I can change the heading in a new course. I can also say, congrats on enrolling. Copy, paste. It says a username, welcome to the course, or I prefer to say, congrats on enrolling in. And then look at this, I save the changes. I go back. What are you doing, Ferdy? Okay, let me show you. Completed the course. If I click on edit over here, I see a new short code. I asked him if uh, the makers of the theme or the plugin can place all the short codes below so we can see them. So here we see the course name. So I go back again. Now I'll use that my first email when people enroll in a course. I want to give them a warm welcome. Congrats on enrolling in this course. If you have any question, go to the Q and A tab in the course or on the course page and ask and ask your question. All this stuff I don't need. Happy learning. 30. And then it will look like this, but I'm not sure yet. I will send a test mail and this will go to the email of your user. There it is. Sudomi, congrats on enrolling. Congrats on enrolling in sample course title. So what I should do over here is in the affiliate marketing course or in the JavaScript course. So that's all uh, automated. I like it. You see the privacy policy terms and conditions. So I'm happy. I save the changes. I go back and now you can go through all the emails. So these are for the students, but also really important for all the teachers, for all the instructors. So when, especially in the beginning, when a student enrolls in a course, turn it on because, and it's nice to get a notification when you have a sale, especially when there are more, it feels like what it's working. Ferdy's making me rich because I host my course at studentme.com. So a student enrolled in the course, edit. So you see information about them and you can adjust this information, send a test email. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So more for the teachers. Let me turn this on. When somebody completed the course, yes, because then you can ask for a review. When there's a new Q, new Q and A message, really important because then you see that you get an email, you can answer it right away and people are extra happy because they feel like uh, they've been taken care of by you answering their questions in a short amount of time. When a student submitted an assignment, then you can uh, give them a grade. When the withdrawal request from you as an instructor is approved. And then for the admin. Well, when a new instructor signs up, I really want to get a notification like, hey, who is this? What kind of courses will we publish? When a new student signs up, I turn it off because then I get messages all the time. When a new course is submitted for a review, I definitely want to check that. When a new course is published, I want to check that. When it's edited and updated and when there's a new request. So this is only for when you have millions of emails you need to send. So right now I don't use this. And if you um, get a lot of emails, you send a thousand emails per day, then you turn this on. But uh, right now I don't need that. So that's it for email. Really handy because now if somebody goes to my website and he becomes an instructor, I get a notification like, hey, there's someone who wants to be an instructor. Then I can approve them. Then they can publish their first course. Then I get a notification through email like, hey, there is a new course check it out and publish it or reject it. And then when I reject it or I publish it, they will get a notification. So the whole email part in Tutor LMS Pro is amazing. I think it's even a blazing. I don't know what it means. A blazing meaning. 
being on fire. Yes. Besides emails, we can also work with on-site notifications and off-site notifications. So if I go to the back end to Tutor LMS Pro add-ons, and then I search for notifications over here, I turn it on. We go to the settings and there you see notifications. So there are on-site settings. That means that when I'm on the internet, I get a notification when something happens on my website. In this case, it will be for the student that gets that notification. And there's push. Push is on your own computer, but you need to turn it on on your own computer. So let's go to myself uh, as an admin. When an instructor application is received, I want to have an on-site notification and a push notification. And for the instructors, I want to do the same. Turn this on. And for the students, when there is a new announcement, when an assignment is graded, I want to turn it on. So uh, that's it. So I save it. And I go to the website. So now when I go to the homepage, I get this. Do you want to receive push notifications for all major on-site activities? Enable. Allow. And OK. So now I go to my other computer and I will become an instructor. So let me fill in some details. And I register. So I get an email and I get a push notification over here, as you see. So there I get emails and I get notifications. And if I go to my dashboard, I also see the notifications over here. Okay, let's talk about content dripping. There are four methods. And in order to activate them, we go to the back end to Tutor LMS Pro add ons. And then over here, I see content drip. I turn it on. And now I can go to my courses any course since I'm the administrator and I want to go to the HTML and CSS course. And since I have selected nothing, everything is available. So I can go, I'm logged in as Lady Gaga over here. She bought this course and she can go to this video. But if I scroll down and I go to the content drip tab, which is available now, I can enable this. And then there are four methods. First, schedule course contents by date. Then I can scroll down to the course builder. And if I go to the first lesson, I scroll down and I can say, this will unlock the 1st of October, 2022. I update it. And right now it's not yet that date. So if I go back and I refresh the page, I want to go to the first lesson. It says this lesson will be available from October 1, 2022, but the other lesson is still available. So I can say uh, this one will, will be available the 1st of October, the second one a week later. So in that way, I can do content dripping. But wait, there is more. The second option is content available after X days from enrollment. Update. So I can say after seven days, this lesson will be available. And then I go to the second lesson, also seven days. And here I can change it. So whenever somebody buys a course from that day on, after seven days, the first lesson will be available. And in this case, all the lessons. So depending on when somebody signs up, I can say after one day or zero days, the first lesson will appear. Then after one day, the second lesson. So every day there will be a new lesson available. Let me update it. Refresh this. And now I want to go to the first lesson. It's available. But if I go to the second lesson, you see I bought the course, but it's still closed. And then it says it will be available from September 23. And here's September 25. So that's the way to do content dripping. Then there's the third way, course content available sequentially. What does it mean? It means that you cannot go from lesson one to lesson 16. Now you need to follow all the steps. So I cannot go here. Please complete previous lesson first. What is HTML? So I go back to that lesson and mark it as complete. And now I can go to the second lesson. Wow. And then the latest one, course content unlocked after finishing prerequisites, something like that. 
I can say that people can uh, follow. Okay. Um, if I would have a quiz over here. So I have a quiz over here. What I can say for uh, chapter two or module two CSS lesson, the prerequisite is the quiz. It should be completed before this item. Update the lesson. So let me update it. Refresh this page. And then there's the quiz. Yes or no. Let's start the quiz. Um, I think no. Submit the quiz. So I failed the quiz, but I'm like, hey, I want to continue. Then I go to the next module and it says, hey, I do not have access. Why? Because first I need to finish this quiz. I need to pass and then I can get access to the rest of the course. So those are the four ways on how you can use content dripping. In order to give people free content before they enroll in the course, we can go to the back end to Tutor LMS add-ons. I scroll down and I search for course preview. I turn it on. I go to my courses. I go to the YouTube affiliate marketing course. To the course builder. And I say, what is affiliate marketing that lesson should be free. So I scroll down all the way and I click on enable course preview. Update. Go to the website. Open this in an incognito window. So I'm not logged in. I scroll down. I see the YouTube affiliate marketing course. I think that's a lot of money. I'm not convinced yet. I scroll down. I see that everything is locked. I cannot watch it, but this video is visible. So if I click over here, even though I'm not, not logged in, I did not buy this course yet. I can still see this. I can do that with as many videos as I want. In order to enroll students manually, we go to the add-ons again. And now it says enrollment. I turn this on. Now I can refresh the page and go to enrollment over here. I click on the plus and I think, you know what? My YouTube affiliate marketing course, I think that will be a great fit for Lady Gaga. So I click on the plus. I enroll her now. And now Lady Gaga has access to my YouTube affiliate marketing course. Hey, maybe you want to export a quiz and import it somewhere else. Well, in order to do that, we go to the back end. Can you guess where we go? Let's go here to add-ons within Tutor LMS Pro. And then I search for quiz, export, import. I turn it on. Then I go to the courses. I go to my affiliate marketing course because there I have a quiz. I scroll down to the course builder. And after the first module at the end, I have a quiz. I click over here. I download it. I can go to any course or any website where I use a Tutor LMS Pro. Let's go to the HTML CSS course to the builder and here below i want to add a quiz so i go to my downloads i download this one and there it is i can upload it and now people can follow my quiz of course i need to change the content unless i want to have the same exact quiz over there so that is the way the cookie crumbles my name is ferdy corp so please like this video and subscribe for more upcoming videos <laughs> okay this add-on will be really fun uh, and it will be more fun the more people you will attract to your website, the more instructors, the more students. So I go to Tutor LMS add-ons. I scroll all the way down and I search for reports. Then I refresh the page and new area appears reports. I click on it. Look at this. There are a total of 14 published courses, uh, five course enrollments. So five people bought a course. There are a total of 27 lessons three quizzes, 23 reviews, three students. So three students bought five courses. There are six instructors and seven questions. And man, this is something that will be more and more fun. More people will go to your website. I made a total of $1.50 because one person bought a course for $10. And I decided that I will get 15% of that and 85% goes to the instructor. So I can motivate a lot of instructors to come over here and sell their pre-made courses because they're already on Udemy or Skillshare. I just have to get them to my website and they get a lot of money and I get a little bit. But if a lot of people buy a lot of courses and I get a lot of times a little bit, I'll make a lot of money.
So total discount, uh, if you want to, you can work with discount. And then I hope this chart will be filled. There's more information, in the most popular courses, the last enrolled courses, the recent reviews, everything at your fingertips, new students. So this is a really nice page and I hope this will increase for you more and more. And of course, this is all what we want to see. By the way, you can also take a look at this. It will also be shown in graphics or graphs. Graphs. A graph is a graphic, isn't it? Okay, let's not <laughs> talk about that. When I scroll down, I see this course from Georgetown, the JavaScript course. And it's completely made by Georgetown. But what I can do, I can enable multiple instructors for one course. Maybe you want to create a course with a friend and then you can both adjust things, both at lessons. So um, I go to the backend to Tutor LMS, add-ons, and I search for multi-instructor, instructors. I turn it on. Now I go to courses, JavaScript course. I hit page down or command or control arrow down. And all the way here, I see instructors. I click on add instructor and I want to add Freddy, which is also an instructor. Click on the plus, save the changes and update. So I want to log out. And now I'm logged in as Freddy, Freddy. I click over here and now I can edit the front end, which is great. So let me change this price to uh, $10 again. Submit. I log out and now I'm logged in as Ferdy. Ferdy again, I go to courses. I got an email like, hey, there's a course changed. Now it's pending. Okay, $10, perfectly fine. Publish. Great. Now I want to log in as Lady Gaga. And if I take a look at all my courses, or I mean the enrolled courses. Okay. So I don't have the JavaScript course. I go to courses, add to the cart, view the cart, proceed to the checkout. Lady Gaga, my details are here. I have read everything. I want to pay with online betalen. And again, I will be redirected to all my courses. Great. The only thing is that the money goes to the first instructor who created the course. So if I log in as Freddy, who's uh, also an instructor, there are no earnings. And if I would go to Georgetown, the original instructor of the course, he made the sale. So you have to figure out together how that works. What you also can do, you can wait and then I will ask the developers of this theme if they can do split payments when there are multi instructors. If I go to the back end and I log in as myself, I see $20 so far. So this is on my PayPal account. And then when people have enough money, they can ask for a withdrawal and then I can send that money to them. Are you ready for some CSS? Well, I'm not a CSS guru. I don't know a lot about CSS. My latest course about CSS was, I think in 2007. So I know a little bit, but let me show you what you can do. Over here, I see those colors. I don't like those colors. Well, I like them. I like to wear purple, but I don't like them in my website because everything is greenish. How can I adjust this? Say command shift F7, F8, 3, 0, 1. All together. No, just kidding. Right mouse click. If you use Google Chrome, right mouse click, click on inspect. Wait a minute. Let's do that again. Um, Okay, let's do that again. I hover over this area, right mouse click, inspect. Yes. Then I see this CSS stuff. I copy this from the point until this uh, parentheses, something like that. Okay, then I go to the customizer. I add some additional CSS, enter, enter, paste. Now I want to replace those colors. The first color over here, paste it. Look at this. Oh, it is changing. And then the second color, paste. And now it looks like this. Way better. Publish. 
Now, look at this. If I click on create a new course, I see this logo. I don't want to see this logo. I want to have my own logo. Well, I close this. I go to the back end to Tutor LMS Pro settings design. And here I need to upload my logo. Studemy uses save the changes. Now, when somebody wants to create a course, he sees my logo or she. So much better. So I have not covered all the add-ons because I do not use them all, but uh, Themium, the maker of Tutor LMS Pro, has tutorials about every specific add-on. So if you see an add-on you want to use on your website, you can go to YouTube, search for Themium, or go to their documentation. They will explain to you how it works. What I want to talk about now is about certi cert cer certi certificates. Yes. Come on. Come on, Ferdy. Gah! Don't hit yourself. Certificates. Let's talk about certificates because uh, I have courses on the internet on Udemy and on other places and people come to me and say, hey, can you give me a certificate? For, for some people, that's really a big thing. Well, with Tutor LMS Pro, it comes with an extra plugin. It's called the Certificate Builder and it's super easy to use. It looks professional. It has a lot of templates. So let me show you how to create a beautiful certificate for your students and automate it so when they finish a course, they have a certificate with their own name, with the course name and all the stuff. And they can show it to people when they apply for a job, like, hey, I follow this course and uh, that can be handy. So let me show you how to do that. In order to create personalized certificates, we go to ferdicorp.com forward slash tutor LMS, hit enter. Then we log in and go to downloads. And here we see the certificate builder. I click on download the latest. Great. I go to the back end of my website to plugins at new. Upload a plugin. And then I drag this one over here. Then I click on install now. And I activate the plugin. I remove this. Now I go to Tutor LMS add-ons and I search for the certificate. There it is. I turn it on. Now I go to settings and then I see certificate. And over here I can create my first certificate. So I click on create certificate. We go to a beautiful certificate builder and we can choose a template and we can categorize things. So I want to have a professional one or an achievement. And if you want to get rid of the categories, clear it. I can also choose for portray or landscape. And then we can choose one and we can adjust it. And keep in mind that you can create your own certificate for every course. So if there's a certain course, you can create a specific certificate for that course. So I scroll down until I think, hey, this one is uh, a certificate I like. I like this one, for instance, so I can uh, preview it. So what I see, the logo, the certificate of excellence to this person for this course, and there can be uh, names and stuff. Okay, I like it. So I click on use this template. Now I can adjust things. So I click here, replace it with my logo of Studemy. Can bring it to the center. Student me. Certificate of excellence. This certificate is certified that that um okay. I can change the text to something else. Opens. This person successfully completed and received the passing grade in. And then I can have the course title. I want the course title to be a bit closer to this text. And I want this text to be a bit, bit bigger. And then I need to make this area bigger. What I prefer to do, make it as big as possible until I see that it's really in the center. So I bring this to this line. So I know it's in the center. And then the course title, it can be a bit bigger in my opinion. 
Yes. Again, a bit closer. Okay. Student name. I can also change the colors so the student name can be green. And of course, I want it to be the same green as I use in the logo. But um, I leave it for what it is. Black is okay. The course title, instructor name. And then I, as the um, host of the whole website, can say Ferdy Corpushook. CFO of stewdeme.com. And I can click over here. I can replace this uh, with a um, signature or an autograph graph. So I have this one. I need to make it smaller. And then for the instructor, yeah, um, he should he should upload his own, send it to me. Okay, well, it's up to the instructor, of course, if he wants to create this. There's instructor name, and I can say, yeah, instructor at studentme.com. I can replace this. Uh, there are more things we can do. I can get rid of this line over here. And uh, right now we can add uh, stuff, student name, signature, the verification ID. I can have a QR code, make sure that people go to my course when they scan this with their phone. I can show the time of that moment when he uh, passes or she. Um, the duration of the course, I just drag it over here and it will display the information. So if I would drag this over here, I click on preview. It will say how long the course took. Remove it. So the logo certificate of excellence, maybe I want the logo to be over here and a bit smaller. Or over here at the top. Certificate of excellence. This can be bigger. Great. Okay, I click on publish. Awesome. Now I close it. I go to the courses and I want to uh, link this to my affiliate marketing course. So I click here. I scroll down all the way and there it is. I use this one, I update it. So now if I log out and log, I log in as Georgetown, I go to enrolled courses, click over here. And uh, I decided that people can complete the course whenever they want. So if I click on complete course, Excellent. Update the review. And now I can view the certificate as Georgetown. So it will be created right now. Look at this certificate of excellence. This certificate or to certify that Georgetown for successfully completing and receiving passing grade in the YouTube affiliate marketing course. I'm the instructor of this course and I'm also the CFO of studentme.com. Now he can download it as PDF or JPEG. So if he downloads it, that goes. And now he can show this to anyone. And then for other courses, I can use different certificates. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't Georgetown the maker of a few other courses? So my courses, yes. So if I go to complete HTML and CSS course, I can click on it. I can say edit with the front end course builder. And now I can scroll down. And I can create a certificate as a course maker, as an instructor. So um, let me do it really simply. Let's go for portray. Use this one. Submit. Now I as administrator get an email like, hey, there's a new update. So I go to courses, it's now pending. I check it, I publish it, view the course, complete the course, cancel, view certificate. And now it says that me, I further corpse hook.
successfully created this course on this date. So uh, now also my instructors can use templates. So that's how you can work with certificates. So what happens when people meet the requirements to get a withdrawal? It's not a whole automated process. Otherwise, people can just get money from your uh, the, uh, PayPal account or bank account without you knowing it. So what happens? Here's uh, Luther Coster. If you go to if he goes to withdrawals, he has sixty three dollars that could be paid out, but it's insufficient balance. So they need to have more money for a withdrawal. If it was enough money, then he could go to the withdrawal preferences. He could uh, decide what he wants. So the minimum is eighty and only has uh, sixty two. Then he should leave his email address. Caster Lucas, uh, what was his name? I don't know. At gmail to come. Save it. And then if he would have the right amount of money, he could ask for a withdrawal. When somebody asks for a withdrawal on your website, you get an email. And then you click on the link in the email, you go to the back end. You go to Tutor LMS Pro withdrawal requests. And then you see the amount of money and you see the email address and then you can go to your PayPal account, send that amount of money to that person and then you can approve it. And then it's being approved over here. You see everything that's rejected. And if somebody did some shady stuff, I don't know, but you can also reject it if they did not follow the terms and conditions. So that's how it works. You get an email when somebody asks for a withdrawal Then automatically it's on pending and then you can send the money, approve it. They get the money. You keep a part of the money because you do split payments. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. And I hope you get a lot of those emails because then you make a lot of money and your website becomes more popular. So what you need to do now or need to do what you can do, you can get a lot of people to your website through paid ads or through reaching out to people. You can go to Udemy, see what the best courses are. Say, hey, you want to use the same course on my website? You get more revenue and um, we'll split the revenue. And you can give get 85% uh, of every sale you make on my website. They already have the course. So they just upload it to your website through Vimeo, through YouTube, or through uploading it uh, really on your website. It's up to you. We spoke about that. So now it's time to attract visitors to your website. You can do it through paid ads or just by blogging like crazy. So through the blogging uh, search SEO stuff, You'll be found on the internet and then people see your website and they can become an instructor and sell their courses on your website and split the revenue. But what you also can do, you can reach out to people, go to Skillshare, go to Coursera, go to Udemy, take a look at a lot of courses, maybe to beginning people that want to make a lot of revenue or to the best people that have the best courses and say, Hey, if you sell your course on my website, you get 85% of the revenue instead of 25%. And uh, in the beginning, it can be hard, especially when your website is small. Also, when I get a lot, of, I get a lot of questions like, hey, can you promote my plugin? Then I always take a look at their Facebook page and the Instagram page. And then when I see they only have 20 followers, I'm like, okay, I don't even take this serious. Uh, so the beginning can be hard, but when you persevere, I really believe in the potential of having a website like this. And I think it's crazy that there is a plugin that can do this. So that's what you can do, uh, but persevere, keep on going. And, and in the end, man, you can make a lot of money. Imagine uh, a thousand courses are sold per month and all courses cost $20. That means $20,000 will go to your accounts. And from that, you can decide how much percentage should go to the buyer. If you say that 50% goes to the, I mean, the buyer, the, the instructor, if 50% goes to the instructor and 50% goes to you, you make $10,000 per month with your website. It's theory, but it's possible. It can also be a 100,000. It can also be a thousand. It can also be 300. So the, the goal now is to persevere, read books about perseverance, about getting things done, go all in. And I really believe when you persevere, you learn new things, you make your website better and you can make a lot of money with this. So I'm really thankful for this amazing plugin. So um, that's how I want to wrap this video up. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you'll learn a lot of stuff. If you have any question, 
feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer you. I will continue uh, learning new things about Tudor, Tudor LMS. So more tutorials will come. If you want to learn a specific thing, let me know. And when there are major updates, I will create new tutorials. And um, feel free to like this video, subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. And now I wish you the best of luck with your marketplace website.